Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you think, we're glad you're here with us today, and we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We want to welcome you here today. Beautiful, warm day, and there's no better place to be. Amen. 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 Well, we're so glad you're here. If people are still coming in, uh, Sheila, we have a couple of individual spots here in the center. And another one for a couple up here at the front. People can sit at the front. I don't bite. I can anyway, we have to stay apart. <laughs> so I have to begin today by uh, sharing an announcement uh, with you that um, a new regulation that came from our government this week uh, stating that uh, congregations are not allowed to sing. Okay, so we can sing as a worship team and uh, we want to make sure that we are uh, in compliance. So I'm going to ask you to find, uh, be creative and find uh, some ways that you can worship the Lord, uh, even if it's to close your eyes and uh, focus on uh, on the words, or you can uh, quietly, uh, quietly mouth the words, uh, breathe the words, quietly sing the words. But uh, clapping, there is no regulation against that. <clears throat> so you can clap and there's uh, no regulation against dancing either. All right. And uh, for those who are watching at home, uh, welcome. We're glad that you join us. You can sing as loud as you want in your living room. All right. And you sing extra loud for the rest of us. Okay. Amen. Father, I thank you for bringing us in, into this place today. And we just want to be focused on you, Lord. Even in the midst of all these restrictions, uh, there is nothing to stop us from focusing our thoughts on you and worshiping you with our heart and our mind and in our quiet words. So, Father, help us to do that today. We pray, God, for those in authority over us, that you would please grant them wisdom during this time, Lord. But, Father, even more than that, I pray that they would turn to you. Yes, Lord. And even more than that, God, I pray that you would wipe this virus from the face of the earth. Yes, in the name of Jesus. We place all of that in your hands. We pray for all who are watching today on Facebook that you would bless them. All maybe who are not here because they're not feeling well. We think of Pastor Billy today who's not feeling well. God, just touch him. We thank you so much for them, Lord. Bless them. And uh, we give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we get started, I want to wish... All the men in here, a very happy Father's Day. God bless you. So I'm going to give you the freedom, whatever you'd like to do. Stand, sit, clap, dance. You Enjoy yourself. Hum. You can hum, yes. Enjoy yourself in the presence of God.
crucifix picture of, or a depiction of Jesus on the cross well that's that's a wonderful thing I mean it's a it's a reminder of what he's done for us but that is only half the story the other half of the story is that three days later he physically rose from the grave and he's alive amen and that's what this song is all about Embarrassed 
death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Amen. I'm going to have you turn around and salute one another. Hi there, welcome to Fresh Wind. My name is Jason Gilbert and I'm the lead pastor here. And I'm so glad that you decided to join us today, whether it's online or here uh, in person at our church building. And I want to say to all the men out there, happy Father's Day. We thank God for you and for all the hard work that you're doing. These are your announcements for Sunday, June Welcome 21st. Welcome back to church family. We are so excited to once again be able to get together. Just remember that um, for the time being, your personal space is now extended six feet out. So no handshakes or hugs, but smiles are free. Hey everyone, you can check out our website at freshwindchurch.net. There you can find links to the latest Sunday sermon. You can find our social media accounts through Instagram, Facebook. And you can find out all the information related to Fresh Wind Church. We love you and we're here for you. You belong here. One of the ways that we express worship and gratitude to the Lord is through the giving of tithes and offerings. Now that we can meet together, uh, offering plates will not be handed out, but they're going to be set up in the back of the sanctuary area and you can drop your offering in there. If you're gonna be watching online, we encourage you to either mail your tithe and offering here to Fresh Wind Revival Center, 21 Lloyd Street, Wingham, Ontario, N0G2W0, or you can do it by e-transfer uh, and email that to fwrcdonation at gmail.com. Thank you so much for your faithfulness and giving. Hey guys, I'm so excited to finally meet you guys again. And just a reminder, you cannot high five and you're going to have to wait for Kids Church, but we are going to have a Kids Church live on our Facebook page. This is just a reminder to you that for the summer months, our Tuesday evening online Bible study uh, is canceled. And we're looking forward to some great things in the fall. So stay tuned. God bless you. Anybody else in here sweating, or is it just me? <laughs> it is warm. <laughs> Amen. Whoever brought these in for me, God bless you. <laughs> I want to thank you for uh, your cooperation as we've been going through all of these changes. Um, it's been, uh, I hope you've been praying for me because I have been praying for you. But all of this has been very taxing on my mind. Um, and uh, so the reason I'm taking a little break from Tuesday nights is to recharge my batteries a little bit and uh, get refocused and whatnot. It feels like the, the uh, regulations for us meeting are changing almost on a daily basis. So uh, we want to try to be obedient to the scriptures, right? Romans 13 tells us that we submit to the governing authorities because uh, there is no authority that is in power that God hasn't put there. God sets them up. God tears them down, yep. and unless they're telling us to outright sin against God, then we have to uh, submit. Same goes in 1 Peter chapter 3, and in the only case is when they tell us you can't worship God, you can't, that you can't preach, that you can't proclaim the word. At that point, we say, I must obey man rather, or must obey God rather than man. 
So far, they haven't done that to us. We can still worship. Uh, and I'm just praying that uh, this temporary setback of no singing will be just that, a temporary setback. Amen. And uh, let's just keep trusting in God. Let's keep focusing on God. I have been, uh, been reading a great book uh, this last week by Dr. David Jeremiah called Shelter in God. And if you haven't got a copy of that, I want to encourage you to get that. It is powerful. And uh, it's, it is so filled with hope. And he just kind of takes us on a, on a bit of a journey of all the times that God had people shelter in place and what he did in their lives in the Bible. All the way from uh, Noah to Jesus in the tomb for three days. And God brings the victory every single time. And that book has been a great blessing to me. And, and I just uh, I highly encourage it. You can probably borrow my copy if they're not pulling up. All right? Okay, if you have your Bible handy, uh, go ahead and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Just a reminder, on our website on Saturdays, that's freshroomchurch.net. I, I placed a copy of the uh, PDF download of our message notes for you to print at home because uh, right now we can't put anything into your hands here. So that's the way around that. And if you are able to, you can download those and print those at home. And you can follow along there. And if not, you're just going to have to take notes the old-fashioned way. But taking notes helps you to stay awake. <laughs> Sometimes. Last week, uh, we began talking about uh, a very important ministry of the Holy Spirit, and that's the distribution of spiritual gifts. And I hope that the last message uh, triggered something in you. And my prayer is that in this next uh, little while, uh, you'll be excited as, uh, as you discover the gift or the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit that he has given to you. We're going to get to our passage in just uh, a few moments, but for now I'd like you to just think about how you would feel if this particular situation happened to you. You have a friend who lives in a city or a town many, many, uh, I'll be Canadian, kilometers away. And because of this great distance, you're not able to see each other for several years. Every Christmas, though, you try to make up for that distance by taking great care and effort uh, in choosing just the right gift for your friend. Even the details of the wrapping reflect your love and respect for your friend as you select the elegant paper and uh, colorful bows. That old uh, Roy Orbison song comes to my mind. Pretty paper, pretty ribbon. Anybody remember that song? <laughs> you know that song, you're very old. <laughs> <laughs> then one day, uh, out of the blue, somebody gives you a whole pile of money and you get to make a trip to go see your friend. And uh, so you, you travel the the long distance and you see your friend at the door and you revel for several minutes in an embrace and then you talk and laugh and you, sh you uh, share a, a wonderful ride from the airport until you at last arrive at your friend's home and after you uh, pause a few moments you, you look around and you see none of the gifts that you sent them on display. Mm -hmm. While still chatting you kind of Glance over into the den, into the kitchen, nothing. And your heart begins to sink. So you don't have enough courage to ask about the gifts. And then while your friend has to step out on an errand, you give in to your human nature and uh, get nosy and start snooping. You peek into the front closet and your heart drops because there, after all those years, are the gifts that you sent, still wrapped. How would you feel? 
You know, as you think through your own emotions, perhaps you can imagine a little, perhaps how God feels. You sent beautifully wrapped and carefully selected gifts as tender expressions of his love for us. Yet, many believers have stored these gifts in the closet, so to speak, unopened, unused. Perhaps they've been in the closet because they did not yet realize that God has given them gifts. We learned last week that if you're a believer, then God has given you at least one, but probably more. And if we store our gift in the closet, uh, we may be missing out on the special way that God wants to use us. So I want to start today by uh, doing a brief review of the gifts. So we want to just uh, review some of the basic facts that we talked about last week. First of all, what they are. Last time uh, we discovered that there are uh, a variety of gifts used in many types of ministries resulting in, in uh, a multitude of benefits for the body of Christ. And we also learned uh, the definition of spiritual gifts. There's supernatural abilities or skills that are given to each Christian, enabling us to function in uh, particular capacities with ease and effectiveness all for the glory of God. And there are 21 gifts available. They're listed for us in Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, and uh, 1 Peter 4. One characteristic, the characteristic of the gifts in these lists, like prisms, they, they flash a, a broad spectrum of abilities and skills. Uh, music, counseling, the ability to learn uh, languages. It may reflect uh, various hues of certain gifts, while other gifts radiate ability such as hospitality, problem solving, craftsmanship even. And as a result, God's multifaceted uh, spiritual gifts can be expressed by each of us in, in different ways. And then secondly, why they are important. These gifts have value not only because they come from the hand of the Lord, but also because like, like rain in the spring, they shower us as a body of believers with incredible benefit. And they're important for at least three reasons. First of all, they keep the body balanced. Most of us like to pursue our favorite interests and tread the same path until uh, we've, we've uh, worn it into a rut. But the variety of spiritual gifts keep the body of Christ moving in many different directions. Safeguarding us against extremes and uh, preoccupations. Another reason they are important is that they keep the church healthy. Since every believer has a spiritual gift, the burden of ministry can be shared equally. I've been in the ministry for a long time, 22 years. This is... Uh, this is one of the few body of believers that gets it right in this regard. Amen. Often, uh, ministries collapse from exhaustion when only a few of the people are doing all of the work. However, when Christians who exercise their spiritual gifts help shoulder the weight, the church booms with vitality. I should have said this when uh, everybody was still locked in their homes and I couldn't face you. But there should be no such thing as volunteers in the church. 
We're all different parts of the same body and we all function as a body. My liver doesn't say, oh, I like Pastor Jay. I think he's a great guy. I think I'll function as his liver today. Right? My liver just does what it does. Keeps my body flowing. God has given each of us gifts as the body. And he gives you the gift. It's not like you, you, you just pull them out whenever it's needed. You function in that gift on a regular basis. And if every church did that, there would be no pleas for volunteers. And then thirdly, that, by the way, that wasn't even in my notes. That was bonus material for you. <laughs> Thirdly, they keep the focus clear. When spiritual gifts are all working together, our eyes are drawn to the giver. And uh, we can't help but glorify him from the joyful overflow of our hearts. Now, the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 illustrates each of those points uh, with a, a memorable analogy that also reveals, uh, in my opinion, his sense of humor. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 12. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we, will, for we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I don't belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body the eye cannot say to the head, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lack it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. May God add his blessing today to the reading of his word. So this, uh, this passage, I mean, it, it makes its point clear that the wording is a little absurd. Talking eyes and, and uh, six foot tall ears. <laughs> but the apostle makes his point. Uh, everybody is needed. Even the seemingly smallest gift is necessary for the whole body to work properly. You know, uh, years ago, I broke my, uh, the small bone in my leg above my ankle five weeks before our wedding. I would like to say I did that in a football accident or that I was downhill skiing and took a huge tumble. It happened as I was bowling and I lost my balance. <laughs> Everybody laughs when I say that. It, it hurt. 
Uh, I was unable to uh, use my leg and my foot for, for half a year. My body did not have the functionality that it should have. Notice verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. So since we are all parts of one body, we would uh, gain immensely from learning how we interrelate. Almost like medical students, we need to learn all we can about it, about the anatomy of the church, the body of Christ. And, and, as, and as most anatomy classes begin, we have to start by categorizing the parts. That's what I want to do for a little bit right now, to categorize the gifts, to categorize the gifts. Now, there's a variety of ways in which people categorize them. I'm all about simplicity. So I feel that a helpful way to categorize the gifts is threefold. First of all, support gifts. The support gifts are foundational. Like the heart and the lungs, the skeletal systems that, that are vital to the body of Christ because they provide uh, direction and stability and leadership for the church. And the next category would be service gifts. The service gifts work behind the scenes, quietly encouraging the body and building up the body. And then thirdly, the sign gifts. Sign gifts uh, supernaturally manifest the, the power of the Holy Spirit and they authenticate God's presence in the church. All of the gifts are given supernaturally by God, every single one. Some gifts evidence themselves in a person's natural abilities. Sign gifts should never be mistaken with somebody's natural ability. Okay? Um, I hope you were able to download the notes on the website. I, I included a, a handy little chart there for you with the, with the categories. Uh, but, but here they are, the support gifts. In, those, in that classification, we find apostleship, word of wisdom, prophecy, word of knowledge, evangelism, pastor, and teaching. Those are, the, those are the spiritual gifts in the support category. In the service gifts, we have administration, leading, encouragement, faith, giving, helps, serving, mercy, and speaking. And then finally, in the sign gifts, we have distinguishing of spirits, miracles, healing, tongues, and interpretation of tongues. All right, that chart is available in the message notes uh, download on our website. So what I want to do for the rest of this is to focus on the support gifts. That's what we're going to do today. The general understanding of the support gifts. The first one that is mentioned, and these are not in any particular order, apostleship. Apostleship. The gift of apostle. Uh, Peter Wagner wrote years ago a great book on the subject of spiritual gifts. And for defining purposes, I'm borrowing from his, uh, his writing, okay? Um, he gives good definitions, so I'm going to draw from that. So the gift of apostle, and I hope you can read that is a special gift, uh, ability that God gives to certain members of the body of Christ to assume and exercise general leadership over a number of churches with an extraordinary authority in spiritual matters that is spontaneously recognized and appreciated by those churches. All right, apostles are those whom God has given especially to pastors and church leaders. So you all know... Uh, Pastor Scott Goddard, I would submit that he possesses this spiritual gift, as does the superintendent of our district, Pastor Lori Gibbons. They're peacemakers, troubleshooters, problem solvers. Sometimes they can make demands that may sound uh, autocratic, but those demands are generally widely accepted because People recognize the gift and the authority it carries with it. 
They have the overall picture and focus and they're not restricted to envision to the problems of one local church. So we can clearly see this gift belongs in the support category. Originally, the gift was given to the 12 who, who had uh, absolute authority as the spiritual leaders in the early church. And because of Judas' betrayal of Jesus and his suicide, 11 were left. And so you can read in Acts chapter 1 how they cast lots to pick his replacement and a man named Matthias was selected who operated as in the authority of apostle. And he served uh, with the other 11. From there, the title was used of the Apostle Paul. It was also used of Barnabas in Acts chapter 14. Uh, two men, in, other men in the scriptures, Andronicus, Andronicus and Junia, are listed in the Bible as apostles in Romans chapter 16. Timothy and Silas are mentioned as apostles uh, in 1 Thessalonians 1 and Two. And so the, the term apostle was not limited to the original 12. The second one is the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom. The gift of the word of wisdom is the special ability that God gives to certain members of the body of Christ to know the mind of the Holy Spirit in such a way as to receive insight into how given knowledge may best be applied to specific needs that arise in the church. I believe that uh, those who have the gift of apostleship may also have this gift. There are those who do not have the gift of apostle that have this gift. Those who have this gift know how to get to the heart of a problem quickly. They have practical minds. They're problem solvers. They have little difficulty in making decisions because they can foresee with a fairly high degree of accuracy what the outcome of the decisions will be. Uh, they probably do not reside in Ottawa. I'm just joking. I just have to say <laughs> When those with the word of wisdom speak, <clears throat> please forgive me, I'm so sorry. When those with the word of wisdom speak, <laughs> I can't get past that. All right. When those with the word of wisdom speak, other members of the body of Christ recognize that truth has been spoken and the right course of action has been recommended. And uh, formal learning is not at all a prerequisite for this gift. It is a supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit. Is this possibly a gift that you have? Have you ever heard somebody give a word of wisdom? Next one I'm going to focus on is prophecy. The gift of prophecy is the special ability that God gives to certain members of the body of Christ to receive and communicate an immediate message of God to his people through a divinely anointed utterance. Most people, when they hear the word prophecy, they associate it with predicting the future. But the biblical use of the word includes not only the future, but also a word for the present. The gift of prophecy has been used much more for dealing with present situations than with future events. You want to know what's going to happen in the future? Read Revelation. I'll give you a hint. God wins. The Greek meaning... Of, the, of prophecy, it means to speak forth. So those who have the gift of prophecy receive personal inspiration about God's purpose uh, in a concrete situation. Now, I need to give a word of warning here. When the gift of prophecy is in operation, the prophetic word will always line up with the written word. And it will never contradict it. There are people who claim to have the gift of prophecy who have said all kinds of crazy things that do not line up with God's word. So be careful. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, it says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. 
You know, there's a dark side to spirituality. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard is coming. And even now is already in the world. One with the gift of prophecy will hold back from speaking until they are sure in their hearts and minds that it is a message from the Holy Spirit. They have to be open to correction from the rest of the body. They want their words to be tested. And when they're wrong, they'll openly admit it. The word of prophecy has to align with the word of God. Now, if a word of prophecy is given that does not line up with the word of God, or what they prophesy does not come to pass, they have to be dealt with. And they have to be disciplined. Then it's false prophet, prophecy. And they're not filled with the Spirit. They, the text says they have the spirit of Antichrist. And you know as well as I do that the spirit of Antichrist is alive and well on planet Earth. In the future, I might deal with this passage and this topic in, in more in-depth way. Body of Christ needs to be balanced, and, and unfortunately, there have been many false prophets out there that have uh, uh, put the body out of balance with their false teaching. Okay? Those, those who receive the benefit of the gift of prophecy can expect comfort and guidance and warning and encouragement, admonition, edification, judgment. Some prophecies are directed by God to individuals and some to the body as a whole. The next one is the word of knowledge. So this gift is, is closely associated with the word of wisdom, but there is a difference. Knowledge relates to the discovery of truth while wisdom deals with its application to life. So the definition, gift of the word of knowledge is the special ability that God gives to certain members of the body of Christ to discover, accumulate, analyze, and clarify information and ideas that are pertinent to the growth and well-being of the body. Those who have this gift are incredible learners, expected to be among the first to discover new truth and originate new ideas, eager to learn they have a long attention span. They are able to absorb and retain um, unusual amounts of information. Kind of like me, right, honey? <laughs> okay, we're over there laughing. All right, they are scholars. <laughs> They're at home with research. They're often found in the academic world. And people who have this gift generally enjoy being on their own to sort out the information and the ideas. A few more. Gift of evangelism. The gift of evangelism or evangelist that's mentioned in Ephesians chapter 4, right after apostle and, and prophet. The gift of evangelism is the special ability that God gives to certain members of the body of Christ to share the gospel with unbelievers in such a way that men and women become disciples of Jesus and responsible members of the body of Christ. So people with this gift are at home when, when they're communicating the gospel of Jesus to the lost. Coupled with their God-given zeal for the unsaved, it's an inspired creativity and clarity in explaining the gospel. They can put the cookies on the bottom shelf, so to speak, and people usually respond to them. People with this gift come from all corners of the house of God. Some lead uh, large public crusades, and some work one-on-one. -on -one. Some love to share the gospel with youth. Some yearn to spread the word to 
people of uh, different ethnic backgrounds. But wherever the emphasis, they are always pointing people to Jesus. Gift of pastor. Gift of pastor is the special ability that God gives to certain members of the body of Christ to assume a long-term responsibility for the spiritual welfare of a group of believers. So while evangelists go to where the lost are, people with the pastor gift, they tend to stay in one locale and shepherd those who are already in God's fold. And along with their shepherding gift, pastors comfort and encourage and guard others while at the same time instructing, reproving, and equipping them. Uh, and, and there's a list of qualifications in the Bible for this gift. You can look those up on your own. Along with the biblical requirements are, are four checkpoints that anybody with this gift has to pass. First, pastors need to be faithful, staying uh, committed to the flock in, in good times and in bad. Second, they need to be practical, not afraid to address the problems of daily life. Third, they need to be discerning, able to spot danger before it's obvious, distinguish the phony from the real, and to sense the struggles uh, of the church. And then finally, they need to be able to take criticism, uh, typically because people uh, have a tendency to throw darts at their leaders. <laughs> and so pastors uh, have to have thick skins and sense of the parts. Okay? Finally, the gift of teaching. The gift of teaching is the special ability that God gives to certain members of the body of Christ to communicate information relevant to the health and ministry of the body and its members in such a way that others will learn. This definition has effectiveness built in. Others will learn. Interestingly, the gift of teaching is mentioned and three of the lists, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, and Ephesians 4. This does not mean that the gift of teaching is any more valid than the others. It probably means that it's a little bit more universal. Different churches have different gift mixes, but every church has the gift of teacher as part of their mix. People who have the gift of teaching are patient with those that they are teaching. Arlen, you, you used to be a school teacher. Did you always have patience with your students? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for putting you on the spot here. Uh, Elisa and I have been home teaching these last three months. A lot of prayer went to the park. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Uh, they can create an atmosphere where learners feel free to raise questions of any kind without feeling they will be put down and made to look silly in front of the others. Teachers have a fear of projecting any attitude that can be interpreted as manipulation or humiliation. They're not threatened or defensive when criticism comes. James 3 verse 1. Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. A lot of people believe they have the gift of teaching, but they do not. People who truly have the gift know that someday they're going to have to give an account of what they taught because they will be judged more strictly. So if you have this gift, use it for the glory of God. But if you don't have the gift, please don't presume to be a teacher. Discover your gift and use it for the glory of God. So as I bring this to a close today, I want to uh, pause and reflect on the spiritual gifts that we've unwrapped so far. Apostleship, word of wisdom, prophecy, word of knowledge, evangelism, pastor, and teaching, support gifts. Where would Christianity be if these gifts remained in the closet, unopened and unused? 
there would be no church. There would be no New Testament. There would be no worldwide spread of the gospel. No shepherd-like protection from ravenous wolves in the world and no sound doctrine. So these gifts are priceless treasures that God has given to the church to hold the church up, to support the church. <clears throat> Foundation gifts, we could also call these. Those of you who have had uh, experience in, in construction know how vitally important the foundation hat is. The Bible says that Jesus is the firm foundation. These spiritual gifts support the body of Christ. So as we carefully consider these gifts, I want to leave you with two principles. First, to those who possess the support gifts, be an example of what you proclaim. Don't be like, uh, like Jonah. He did not want to go to Nineveh. Mm -hmm. Yet, I believe he's a classic example of how God can use a person in spite of a person. <laughs> he went to Nineveh, and there was a massive revival. And he was not happy. Please don't let me be like Jonah. I want a mighty move of God. 1 Timothy 4 verse 12 says, In speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity, show yourself an example of those who believe. And then secondly, to those who receive the benefits from men and women with the support gifts, hold these people in high regard, respect them as gifts from God, and encourage them. Okay? So far we've gone through seven. You think that you have one of these? Well, let's get together and talk. All right? Maybe you have another gift. So keep unwrapping until you find out. Don't leave your gift unwrapped and in the closet because it's too valuable to hide. Use it. Build up the kingdom of God and to build up his church. And invite Arlen to the keyboard, please. Just ask everybody to bow their heads and close their eyes for just a moment. Maybe you're here today, or maybe you're at home in your living room, or you're on your computer watching. You have not yet made Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. But this is the absolute most important decision that anybody could ever make. Eternity is at stake. You know, there are some that... Uh, have the gift of evangelism and it comes easier to them than it does to the rest of us but God calls all of us to be soul winners go into all the world and make disciples of every nation Jesus said and so part of our mandate fresh wind is to make disciples who will return go out and make disciples If you're not a disciple of Christ today, friend, what are you waiting for? Do it today. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Those of you watching at home, those of you in here today, if you have not given your heart to Jesus Christ, just quietly slip up your hand. Say, Pastor Jason, please pray for me. I want to make Jesus my Lord. Is there anybody? Those of you at home, I can't ask you to raise 
raise your hand because I can't see. This is between you and God. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. All of that is summed up in a, in a fancy word called repentance. Where we, we ask Jesus to forgive us of our sins and then we turn our back on that lifestyle and follow him. Continually saying with our lips that Jesus is Lord. Continually believing in our hearts that God raised him from the dead. I'd like to invite everybody to pray this prayer after me. Those of you who are watching at home. Just repeat this little prayer. You mean it and follow me. Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. And that without Jesus, I have no hope. Today, I make you my Lord. I turn my back on my way of life and follow your way of life. Today, I confess that Jesus is Lord and today I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead and that he is alive Jesus be my Lord in Jesus name Amen if you said that prayer today you meant it I want to welcome you to the family of God I would like you to get a hold of me, Pastor Jason, at hurontel.online.ca. I'd love to help you out with your first steps as a, as a brand new believer. So I want to thank you for uh, joining us today. Our Father, I thank you for bringing us together and for the presence of your spirit that we have felt in this place. I ask your blessing upon you now. All who are watching us. Pray a special blessing today on all fathers. I thank God that I've got two men still in my life, godly men that I look up to, who are examples to me, my dad and my father-in-law. I pray a special blessing on them, God. And I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, men. Happy Father's Day. I'm going to invite all the men just to stand really quick. Can we just show our appreciation for you? Thank you. God bless you.